something that occurred to me, uh, and I, I never hear anybody else, you know, thinking about this, is that the author of Revelation is John of Patmos. Uh, he's under serious strain to keep this document sounding as unlike what's really going on as possible, lest he, you know, be discovered and killed. So, you know, this is why he used so many Old Testament passages and secret codes. Think about it. If Romans were, in fact, going to insist you have to take some kind of mark on your hand or on your forehead, for real, I mean literally, and he spoke about that uh, in a different deity in any way, uh, you know, trying to do the same, it would blow the cover, wouldn't it? So, perhaps the marks aren't literal. They're not literal marks. But metaphorical or symbolic ones? If so, well, I'd have to consider, is there anything in the Old Testament that is similar? Uh, you know, a mark that's not literal or mysterious. Well, yeah, there is. Brace yourself. This is the big one, people. After Cain had killed Abel, it said that Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Whiny little bitch. Today you are dri driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Oh, that's not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. And then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. Now, a just God would let this guy die. Not, you know, he just murdered somebody. Not somebody who protects someone who murders. The point isn't to say that God is just, but to explain why these people should be feared at all costs. What this mark is has had many strange speculations by many people over the years. Some have suggested that the mark is invisible and will only become visible in the last days of judgment, but I don't usually tend to listen to the thoughts of retards. Zechariah Sitchin, in his Earth Chronicle books, speculates that Cain was transported to South America, they became the Mayans or Incans or something like that, and that the mark is their inability to grow facial hair. Uh, okay. And then author Daniel Quinn's character, Ishmael, admitted not knowing but the speculation that it may have been the mark of being white. You know, would be understandable since it is the Caucasian world that has since driven empire like Cain, causing so much murder in the world. And it makes a little bit more sense. But whatever it is, this mark is a mystery, one that even I won't tell you I know. But my best speculation is that those who began civilization's growth may have had a different physical appearance in some way that the tribe uh, who wrote this tale. Yeah, perhaps a strange custom of putting something on their heads or something along those lines. What we do know is if you kill somebody in this world who lives this way, it's as though you've committed a horrible crime, more so than anybody else or any other living creature. War begins against you and your tribe. The same is true even today. If a dog or bear or some animal kills a human being, our law actually says that that creature must be hunted down and killed immediately. Yet no such law is in place of the person who goes out to kill bears. So we have a mysterious mark. The whole, just like the whole 666 thing. But that's not the only thing you can search for. See, where did it say those marks would be worn? Hmm. On the hand? Or on the head? Was there something else in the New Testament or the Old Testament that related to the hands and head? Yes. Now remember when we were talking about the seven woes, where Jesus lays the Pharisees flat out just before he begins those? He says, everything they do is done for men to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. Phylacteries. Phylacteries were worn by Pharisees on their hands or on their foreheads. There was reason for this, and yes, get ready to hear something tremendously stupid. In Levitical law, it spoke about valuing the law of God, the commandments. How did it suggest they do this? Well, it's written in Deuteronomy. Check this out. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them down on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. How interesting is that? Well, so this is what the Pharisees did. They made boxes. They wrote on scraps of paper the biblical passages they valued most. They put them into the boxes, they closed them, and then they tied the boxes to their heads or their hands. Now, 
it's <laughs> wearing a box on their head. It seems to me that obedience to laws would be more important than wearing them. You can't absorb righteousness through osmosis. That's just stupid. No, instead, you would make them the very way you think, or you bind them to your head. You would make sure the works of your hands reflect the righteousness that they represent, or you bind them to your hands. In other words, it's not literal. But they did take it literally. And so, Pharisees who loved making a big show of how righteous they were would make their phylacteries wide. It's just like Christians today who love to stick huge family Bibles on their coffee tables for all to see, but they never actually seem to get around to reading it or definitely obeying it. So, if you combine the phylacteries with the mysterious mark on Cain, you have a very strange concoction. You have a mark not to be taken literally, which makes you think and work a certain way. People in a civilization work blindly like ants to obey the orders of their leaders, or so it would appear to an outsider, and usually it's true anyway. They take the mark and become a driver of the purpose of that culture. Now, the mark of the beast, therefore, is not literal. Rome wanted to force people to worship the statue and part of that worship would be the service of the Roman Empire. But if you didn't, there would be punishment. It was going to be Mithras. But as I said, it didn't end up that way.